What's up everyone and welcome to Art and Design. My name is Torkin and today we just reached 10,000 subscribers. So I just wanted to throw this video out there and show you what I've done for this occasion. Uh, my hands are pretty shaky right now. I just came from the gym, so um, don't mind that. I don't have arthritis or Parkinson's disease um, just yet. Let's hope not. But for this video, I wanted to celebrate this occasion by making an artwork that is um, kind of celebratory of this fact that we reached 10,000 subscribers. So what I decided to do is I decided to draw 10,000 dots. So let's go to the time lapse function. We tap on this one right here. And here we see it start out. I did count all these points manually, so bear in mind that it might not be 100% accurate, but I tried my best to keep it at 10,000 dots. Alright, so this is where we're at right now. I am not really so pleased with the background here. It's not really complementing the artwork in the middle here. And I'm also kind of questioning this golden circle here. Maybe I'll change this a bit. Now, if we look at the details here, we see we have a little bit of gold, we have a little bit of light blue and dark blue. My thinking here was that the gold accent or the gold color here would complement the blue. It kind of does, but it only does it when I'm like this. But when I zoom out like this, uh, the white doesn't really complement the gold and the other things here. I'm going to try to work on this today in this video and try to get it to a point where I'm happy with the results. So first things first. I think I'm going to add a drop shadow behind the artwork. So the gold thing has a sort of a drop shadow because it's a little bit too unnatural right now. There's no shadows at all. Let's add a drop shadow. So we take this one right here, we duplicate it, select the underlying layer, go to Gaussian Blur. And we're just going to raise the Gaussian Blur a bit like so. And then we're going to decrease the brightness all the way to black, like so. I think I'm pretty happy with that. Now we can see based on the drop shadow, the light source should be right smack down in the middle, right here. So the gold accent here, it doesn't really reflect that. The light source seems to be coming from this angle and this angle right here. So. That's the first thing that we need to fix, is the reflections in the gold. Maybe that'll add some realism to it. So let's try that. So we take the gold layer right here. I'm just going to duplicate that so that I don't mess it up. And now I'm going to hide all of the other layers that are on top so we can get a clean working layer. So now I have this layer selected, I'm going to remove assisted drawing on it. So just going to do that. And let's pick a nice brush. I'm thinking about sticking to airbrush for this soft airbrush because it's the texture here is very soft. All right, so let's just get to it. I'm just going to pick up color that's next to this reflection here. But first, I'm going to make a copy of this color. So let's find a palette like this one, which isn't full yet. I'm just going to take this color and keep it here. I'm going to take this color right in the middle here. That's the reflection color. I'm going to place it right around here. I find the color somewhere in the middle. Place it there. And let's see, we have kind of different shade here in the edges. Oh dear, what's the darkest part of this image? Uh, probably somewhere over here. 
let's keep that there shift those around all right so now i have my basic palette here and let's just start by filling in this section here oh first things first i'm gonna alpha lock this so that I don't draw outside the layer boundaries and let's get to work pick up this one here a bit of this So now we pick a reflection color and let's see if I can do something like this. Pretty happy with that. Let's see what it looks like with all of the other stuff on it. Right. Mm. All right, I think I'm pretty happy with that. All right, now let's try to figure out the background because it's very white. It's very minimal, which I am fond of because this is supposed to be the main thing. There's 10,000 dots here, 10,000 subs, and the background should be as minimal as possible. But maybe we can make it work with something a little bit more abstract. So, I don't know. Let's see what we can do. So here are a bunch of images that I took in Iceland, which are from Hot Springs. And as you can see, they're pretty beautiful colors. We have a lot of red, a lot of greenish tones and brown. And so I'm looking for something with a very uniform texture to it. Something maybe on the lines of this. This might actually work, these two. Let's try this one first. All right, so now the picture is in. Let's move it to the back. So if you want to expand the image completely full size you can tap on fit to screen but if you have freeform only selected it'll do this it'll just make it fit so that nothing is cropped but if you want to fill it all the way to the edges and crop some of it away tap on magnetic then then you'll get the entire canvas and while you have magnetic selected you can reposition it like so and yeah I think this is actually pretty cool. What about if you had it like this? Huh. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. See, now these stones here are drawing a lot of attention to them. I don't want that. I, I do like the way that they look. I don't want the stones to be the main focus here, so I'm actually thinking about having it. I'm actually thinking about having it more like this. Yeah, let's try this one out. And let's also try the other image. Let's watch this one right here. I think there are too many stones here that'll detract from it. Oh, this actually looks pretty cool. Although the stones are drawing my attention. Let's try another image. Let's watch it. This one right here. All right, so now this image is in. Let's fit that to full screen. Oh, that looks very interesting. A lot of interesting textures in here. Hmm. It's going to be difficult to choose. Now, as you can see, it's a lot of trial and error involved here. I'm just mainly playing around with which image fits and I like this one. I like this one a lot. 
tell you our entire image here so that I can see it in full size. So this, a little bit too bright. This has some shading to it. The, this one has the stones there. Maybe I can blend them together, make something of a hybrid. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Way too bright. All right, let's try this. I, I'm pretty fond of this. But now one thing that I'm noticing is that the tendrils and all of this fine little detail here is getting pretty lost because the the background is so, well, in the way, I guess. It's demanding too much attention. One thing we could do is we could merge these together. And that seems to work pretty fine. All right, so now I've merged these together. And I'm going to try blurring out the background. And you can see, just focus on whatever you're focusing on and notice what changes in your perception of it. So if you're focusing on the background, you can see your eyes will probably tend to want to focus on the thing that is not blurred. That's the thing with human vision is that we want to focus on things that are sharp, that are in the front. That's why adding a blurred background will often make the image in front kind of pop out a little bit more. So if I have it like this, everything is in sharp focus and it kind of begs the question, what am I supposed to be focusing on right here? So adding a little bit of blur, if I have too little, it'll reduce the effect. If I have too much, well, it'll all blend together. So let's find a happy medium. All right, I think I'm happy with this. So it's a little bit blurred right now. And this also means that because this is in focus and this is not in focus, it means that this object is in front. And that means that the drop shadow needs to be um, appropriate for that. Now, the way it is right now, it doesn't make sense because the drop shadow is positioned like maybe like it's hovering about a centimeter or two centimeters away. So let's change the background, drop shadow, blur it out a little bit more. Now, one thing that I'm noticing is there's a light source in the background. You might be able to notice that. The light source seems to be coming from this direction right here, basically from the sun. So what can we do with that? Well, first thing, we place the light source in the front here. That doesn't make sense anymore, unless like we were taking this image with a flash. And at that point, maybe it'll make sense, but but anyways, I'm going to change the light source so that it's coming from the sides instead. So I'm going to put that in fast forward for you. And now change things up a bit, I've added a shadow here, and now I'm going to see if I can move this thing right here, this bright spot. Let's just continue like this. All right, so now I'm going to add the bright spots into the image. The sun is coming from this direction right here. We can simulate that with a drawing guide. Let's just add a perspective drawing guide. And I'm gonna assume the 
sun is coming from approximately this direction. Of course, the sun is far away. So make this as far away as we can. I think it's something like this. So this is approximately the direction of the sun here. So now we can use that in order to work out how the highlights and the shadows are supposed to work. Let's just continue like that. There we go. That is pretty, pretty good. So we can see the tendrils. They really stick out much better than they did with the white background. The graphic looks much better. So it's, um, I don't know why it, it kind of, it just blends together much better. I'm thinking if I want to do some light rays, maybe I can use a color that's already in the image and just emphasize it and saturate it like so let's try luminance and add a bit of light streak i'm not liking the green it's way too aggressive. We can change that. Come to hue, saturation, and brightness, and simply changing the color. Make it a little bit bluish, like that. Just a little touch right here. Do that. So opposite of cyan blue is approximately orange. We can maybe add some orange to it also. And it makes it pop out just a little bit. It's getting a little bit too colorful for my liking, but you know, it's just decrease the intensity of it like so. Now I want to add a little bit of detail to this section right here so what i'm thinking about doing is masking out an image on top of this or texture on top of this so let's try that I'm add an image let's find something with a lot of texture or something like this or this maybe let's try this all right, so now the image is in, and now let's take a look at what I'm gonna do with it. So first things first, we don't need to expand this to the entire canvas, because the image that we're gonna be focusing on is the tendrils or the details over there. So we can actually make this a little bit smaller, like so, pretty good, and now, we need to select everything that has color. So first things first, I'm going to merge these two together, create a group first, and I'm going to duplicate the group and flatten it out. The reason why I do this is because if I want to change this layer right here at any point, I can still do that. I have a copy of it. This is just a backup. I'm going to hide that. 
and let's focus on this one. Now I'm going to select the contents of this layer by tapping and holding. Now I've selected the contents of this layer. Now I'm going to inverse that selection. So now I've selected everything that is not the colored areas right here. And now I'm going to simply delete it from this image. The way I do that is by swiping the three fingers like so. And now we can see that we have a little bit of texture on the colored image. You might be able to see it here. But if we increase the intensity of it, you can see it really starts popping out. It's a little bit too much here, especially in the middle. It looks kind of wonky. We can play around with how it interacts with the underlying layer. Try to find something that, that fits. Right. I'm thinking about using Darken for this. And I'm going to erase some of it away gradually, especially here in the middle. I don't want it to be so exaggerated right here. So we have that layer selected. I'm just going to remove it from here. Are there any other trouble areas? Maybe like here, inside of this Lausanne here. Move a bit from that. A little bit here, a little bit there. Not too much. I'm pretty happy with that. Now for the final part, I want to make this glow a little bit. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this layer right here, and duplicate that again. Now I'm going to go to Gaussian Blur, increase it a little bit just like this. Let's see how much do I want it to glow. Something like this. Just a little bit of glow. Now we can play around with the blend modes. I want to lighten the image. There's a lot of glow here. Can bring it back just a little bit. Maybe somewhere around here. The one thing I'm thinking about is maybe I don't want it to glow inside of the circle, only outside of it. I'm going to select the contents of the golden layer and I'm going to erase from the glow layer. So we can tap clear. Now we see we only have glow where it exceeds the golden layer boundaries. Now we can actually bring that up a bit. Might even just duplicate it or add it effect. I think that's a little bit too much. Let's see. Actually, I'm liking the way it is like right now. All right, so I'm thinking about calling it at that for this image. Now, 10,000 subscribers, 10,000 dots here. Thank you all so much for being one of these small little dots. If you want to subscribe to the channel and learn more about Procreate and art and all that good stuff, do so by clicking the subscribe button. Leave a thumbs up on this video if you liked it. Uh, if you want to see more of this, let me know in the comments down below. If you want to see more of these kinds of images, I have an Instagram account, which you can go ahead and check out. Follow me there if you want to get updated about uh, when I post new photos. Thank you so much for watching. Have an awesome day today. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye bye.